Okay, welcome to our next topic on applying our derivative. In this, in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at optimization problems. And optimization problems, what you're trying to do is you're trying to maximize or you're trying to minimize a variable. Um, you're going to be given some sort of a constraint, like for instance, you might be given how much fencing you can use, or you have a container that holds a certain volume, and you're going to be trying to minimize a cost, or you're going to be trying to maximize an area that you can cover, whatever it may be. Um, it's important to kind of follow these guidelines. You have to think your way around the problems. There's really just not a whole lot of notes to give you, but we're gonna, I'm going I'm to work some examples for you here. Um, but first of all, let's go through these guidelines. Make sure you read the problem. Uh, read the problem uh, very thoroughly. Sorry about that. Let me get my pen up. Um, read the problem very thoroughly and um, identify what the problem is saying to you. So identify, identify, try this again. Identify what they're asking you. So are they asking you to maximize the area? Are they asking you to minimize the cost, what it may be? And also write down the constraint they're giving you. If they're giving you 200 feet of fencing, write down they're giving you 200 feet of fencing. If they're giving you a, a volume of a subject, uh, you know, something, then go ahead and write that down. Make a sketch if possible. Um, make sure you write down the known facts that we just talked about. Identify the variable that you're trying to maximize or minimize, and then once you do that, you're going to you know, set up the equation, um, use your constraint, plug the constraint in, take the derivative, and then maximize the equation. Won't be working with any equations where you would get a maximum value or minimum value that you, you didn't want or that was the opposite of what you wanted. So let's look at a couple of examples here. First example we're going to work with is that you're going to have a piece of tin, a uh, piece of sheet metal that's 12 inches long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up so I have a right angle and I form a rain gutter. This is something that goes on the top of your house. And the question is going to be, okay, well, what is this, what should this, how long should this be so that I maximize the amount of rain that my gutter will hold? So if those, those turn, the things that I'm turning up there, if they're both x, then this in the middle right here, this is going to be 12 minus 2x because I had the 12 inches of sheet metal that I was working with initially. And then what you're trying to maximize, you're trying to maximize the volume of rain that that's going to hold. And the depth of that rain gutter is going to be um, inconsequential. Like you're not going to need that. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maximize the cross surface like area in here. Because whether the rain gutter goes 30 feet down my house or 10 feet down my house or whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter. That's going to be a constant. So I'm trying to maximize this area right here. So the equation I'm trying to maximize is going to be the area of the rain gutter, which is going to be x times 12 minus 2x. And in maximizing that, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and, and, um, and, and take and distribute the x. So I get the area equals 12x minus 2x squared. Take the derivative of that, a prime, which is going to give me 12 minus 4x. Set it equal to 0 and solve it. So I get x equals 3. And what that tells me is that the how much I should turn up here and here should be 3 inches. So the dimensions of my rain gutter are going to be 3 inches um, by 6 inches. And that will maximize the amount of rain that it will hold in that gutter. And then the depth that goes across the house, so like the, the height of it or something like that, is going to be more like you know the 10 feet. But that's a constant. That's, not, that's, a, that's an unimportant in, in our uh, problem here. In our second example, what I'm going to be doing is this is going back to Algebra 2 and a little bit earlier this year, where I'm going to have a piece of cardboard and I want to create a box out of that piece of cardboard. The original piece of cardboard that I have is 21 inches by 16 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a square. I'm going to cut out the same square out of all four corners. Let's call that square x by x. And of course, it's x by x on each of them. And when I turn that square, when I, once I, when I turn those flaps up, when I turn this flap up and this flap up and this one and this one, I'm going to form a box with a volume. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maximize that volume of that box. So the volume of a box is length times width times height. And the x, the square that I'm turning out, cutting out, that x part of it, that's going to be my height part of it. 
and then I just need to I need to represent the length and the width based upon my original 21 inches that's before the cuts and 16 inches and that's before the cuts so this part that's inside of the two cuts is going to be 16 inches minus 2x because I'm coming in from x from the right hand side and from the left hand side and then this one down here is going to be 21 minus 2x again because I'm coming down x units and I'm coming up x units so then the volume the volume equation would be 16 minus 2x times 21 minus 2x times x and <clears throat> what I did was I, I did go ahead and multiply that out so I, I multiplied it all out I foiled it and all that stuff and before I took the derivative and what I got was 336 x minus 74 x squared plus 4x cubed uh, go ahead and take the derivative of that um, when I take the derivative of that v prime is going to be um, I wrote it as 2 times so I could get rid of that 2 168 minus 74x plus 6x squared and when I solve that I got x to be 28 over 3 or x to be 3 and in my case the 28 over 3 doesn't make any sense and the reason is if you go back to our original domains is 28 over 3 is a little bit greater than 9. I can't cut 9 inches from the left or from the right and then 9 inches from the left. I only have 16 inches total. So this doesn't make this answer right here does not make any sense. So I'm going to reject this and the cut that's going to maximize the volume of my box is going to be 3 inches. So x equals 3 inches. Um, the other dimensions um, that I would find would be this would be 10 inch this part would be 10 inches right here and this part would be 15 inches. Make sure you go back and answer the question. You know if it might happen to say like this question might have to say what's the maximum volume, not what the cut is, but this this particular case is this, what is the cut of the square that will produce the maximum volume. The maximum volume would be just 3 times 10 times 15 if you had to find that. So a couple of, of maximization questions. Another type of question that you might see is when we have the cost of something and usually when we have cost of something we're trying to minimize it and um, I drew kind of a net what we call a net diagram of my cylinder and so in this case what's happening is I have a cylinder and one of the things that I can identify is that it has an open top and that's why I do not have a circle on the top part of it and it has a capacity of 24 pi inches cubed so the volume of my cylinder is going to be 24 pi inches cubed and that's my constraint that's what I'm working with and then the cost of this of the these things the cost of this part right here is going to be five cents that's going to be my lateral area which I'll find in just a few moments and then for the cost for the bottom that's the circular part that's going to be 15 cents so the cost of this is going to be 0.15 times the area of my base which is pi r squared and then it's going to be 0 0.05 and then that's times the um, that's going to be this is going to be the lateral area of my cylinder which is going to be 2 pi r h that's the lateral lateral area of a cylinder sorry my L's are not very good um, and so I, I have this cost equation and I have two variables I have R and I have H and one of the things I can do now is I need to um, I need to go ahead and I need to replace the H variable or I can replace the H variable using the volume because I have to use my constraint so the volume of the cylinder is pi R squared H if I solve that if I set it equal to 24 pi the pi's will divide out and so h equals 24 over r squared that's going to go in right here and I'm going to rewrite my cost equation as 0.15 pi r squared plus this part right here is going to be um, well it's going to be 0 0.05 times 2 pi r times 24 over r squared and I'm going to simplify that before I go ahead and take my derivative um, let's see here what I did make sure that I am doing this correctly okay 
So um, first of all, this is going to be 0.1. Um, the r will cancel with that, and this is going to be r to the negative 1 power. And then 0.1 times 24 is, um, is going to be uh, 2.4. So I have 0.15 pi r squared. And then it's going to be plus, this is going to be 2.4 um, pi times r to the negative 1 power. And then um, I could, at this point, I have just one variable. I just have r. And so I can go ahead and uh, take the derivative. So I get 0.3 pi r um, minus, and it's going to be 2.4 pi um, over r squared, or r to the negative 2. I'm going to write it as over r squared. Set that equal to 0. And when I set it equal to 0, I can move this part over, cross multiply. So I end up with 0.3 pi r equals 2.4 pi over r squared. If I divide both sides by pi, these will drop out. If I multiply by r squared, I get r cubed. And if I divide by 0.3, 2.4 divided by 0.3 is 8. So a nice, nice value for my r value. It's 2, and I think that's in inches. Yeah, it's in inches. So r is 2 inches, and then to get my height, I can go right back here, and I can get my height to be 6 inches. And that will minimize my cost. You know, oftentimes we're looking to minimize our cost. Obviously, we don't want it to be larger um, than it needs to be. And so we're trying to make this can, and we're trying to make it as small as possible so we can get uh, as much capacity but at as low a cost as possible. Uh, a final example, a final thing that we look at with our um, optimization problems are problems involving Pythagorean theorem. Um, in this problem, we have east-west highway and a north-south highway intersecting each other right at P. And at 10 a.m., at 10 a.m., okay, we have a car traveling east at a constant speed of 20 miles per hour. So we have car A, let's say we have car A right here, and that car is headed out at 20 miles per hour, so 20 miles per hour. And um, that's, remember, that's the change in the A, a variable. So that's, it's like, you know, DA... Um, over dt. And then right at that time, we have another car that's two miles away, two miles north. So car B is up here. And it's, it's two miles north of the intersection. And it's traveling towards the intersection. So it's going down towards the intersection at 50 miles an hour. So we're tra car B is traveling this way. So the distance is getting shorter. Car A is traveling that way. So the distance is getting further. Now I need to represent this vertical side. And what it is is the two miles that's starting away and then it's subtracting 50 miles per hour, 50t. And the question that's being asked here is, um, the question that's being asked here is to find the time at which they're closest to each other and approximate the minimal distance between, oh, that should be between, that should be, <laughs> oh, well, that's not a three, that's between uh, the automobiles. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find when is that minimum going to occur along that hypotenuse. Let's just call that C. So we'll call our hypotenuse C, A, B, and C, just like right triangle. Relationship between those variables is Pythagorean theorem. And so what we can set up is that C squared equals A squared. Um, this is 20 miles per hour, so it's 20t, not just 20. So it's 20t, and then uh, squared, and then plus 2 minus 50t squared. And, um, you know, obviously I, I would take the square root of that. When I, when I simplified it, I said, okay, well, c is the square root of, I multiplied this all out and all this stuff. I got 4 minus 200t um, minus 2900 t squared. And again, uh, as I did with a couple of other examples, I'm going to take the derivative here, but I, on the derivative, when I take the derivative here, I'm going to end up using chain rule. I can really get rid of that square root because it's just going to be the same thing on the numerator and denominator. It's really this whole problem, if I were to make this as 4 minus 200t minus 2900t squared, 
to the one-half power. I'm really not interested when I take the derivative where the denominator is zero. Okay, that's, that's, that's not going to be part of my, uh, my domain of my answer. So I'm just really interested where the numerator is zero. So I'm just really interested in where the inside part is going to be zero, where the derivative of that. So it's going to be negative 200 Sorry, this should be plus. I'm, I messed up on that. It should be negative 200 um, plus 5800. That's 5800t. And then set that equal to 0. So t is going to be um, 1 over 29 minutes. Or uh, 1 over 29 hours, sorry. Um, and then to find to find out how far that would be is I would put that 1 over 29 in my original equation right here and I or in this equation right here either one is fine and I found a minimal distance to be 0.74 miles so I found the distance to be or C to be 0.74 miles so in optimization problems in these examples that I've done you have some different um, relationships whether it's Pythagorean theorem whether it's geometry formulas um, what, you know whether it's just some simple basic area volume type stuff and you have a constraint you're using so you set up your problem that you're trying or your equation that you're trying to maximize or minimize use your constraint take the derivative set it equal to zero solve the equation okay so optimization take a stab at those problems a couple days worth of work and uh, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions about it uh, and then we'll keep on applying derivative in the next few sections best of luck